Let's face it, most of us function a heck of a lot better once we've had that first cup of coffee in the morning. Before we get swept up by our busy schedules and deadlines, a cup of coffee is a must before anything else. However, the process of coffee, from crop to cup, is actually much more dense than we think. It has to go through years of mastery in order to get that fine grade, final blend of aroma and flavor. The bigger question is, do our local coffee farmers really know what goes into running a proper coffee farm? So we are joined by the Zambia Coffee Growers Association today and with me is Joseph Taguma who is the manager of the Zambia Coffee Growers Association. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Okay, so we'll get into it firstly. So uh, obviously coffee growing is quite dense. There's a lot that we don't really see, a lot that we don't really hear about when it comes to growing coffee. What are some of the prerequisites that go into growing coffee? Well, the very first thing uh, is that it's a tropical crop mm -hmm. um, and so Zambia is, is actually best suited for growing coffee. You need uh, loads of water because you have to provide water for, for, for the crop right through this, uh, the year. Mm -hmm. So for Zambia, since we only have one rain season, irrigation is a must. Um, and then you just make sure that you are not in an area that is uh, prone to frost. Mm -hmm. Because it's a tree crop, um, you need long-term finance. Mm -hmm. um, and by long-term finance, I'm looking at uh, uh, financing packages of between 8 to say 13 years. Mm -hmm. It's a very and long that time. Is, <laughs> that is where we, we, we have a problem. Yeah. you know, as, as an industry, mm -hmm. because that kind of financing is not available uh, in our banks. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us okay. what exactly the Zambia Coffee Association does for coffee growers in the country? We have what is known as the Coffee Board mm -hmm. um, of Zambia, which is the policy-making body um, on coffee matters in the country. It comprises of people from government as well as from the coffee farmers mm -hmm. or the coffee industry, including roasters. And then we have, and this is a statutory body, the Zambia Coffee Growers Association, which is basically the operative wing of the coffee board uh, of Zambia. The association is, uh, well, basically draws its membership from all people that grow coffee mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. Smallholders and large uh, scale, mm -hmm. and by smallholders I mean anyone growing between a um, couple of acres to eleven or to to ten hectares, and then anyone doing above ten hectares is a large scale farmer. And what the association does is to provide secretarial services to its farmers mm -hmm. or members. It also provides quality control services. Mm -hmm. Um, providing basically independent um, quality assessment of, of coffee. So any buyer who buys coffee, you know, is able to use the association, you know, to check on its quality uh, on the coffee that uh, they have bought. Then the association also does a meeting and we have a meeting plant uh, for what is known as a, a dry meal and this is available to all the farmers that do not have their own meals. So the coffee will have come in here as parchment and we will drop it into this hopper here down. Mm -hmm. we, we have a system down there which draws the coffee using the elevators and taking the coffee to the hala. Mm -hmm. uh, what the hala does is it breaks the parchment and uh, the husks are brought out. Um, there is another hopper outside where the parchment um, husks are blown out too. Mm -hmm. The green bean is then uh, moved again from the hala uh, through the elevators into what is known as a grader. And then the grader will grade the coffee based on the size and density. Mm. Yeah. 
and we have about seven grades. Yeah. Uh, the topmost being a triple A, mm -hmm. uh, and then you have the, the, the lowest grade being a T grade. Now that's all based on uh, on size. Mm -hmm. We then go on to fine tune uh, the top grades, particularly the triple A, the AA, and the AB, mm -hmm. by placing them on a machine that is known as a gravity table. Mm -hmm. uh, the gravity table will help us to separate the lights from the heavies, mm -hmm. which basically, you know, um, improves uh, on the outlook of the of the green bean. Then we will take the coffee from uh, from either the grading machine or from the gravity table straight into another hopper, where we uh, where we will blend the coffee. I see. Uh, from the hopper, um, from the blending hopper, we then take the coffee. Um, to another small hopper in redness now to bag out mm -hmm. and then we'll bag out into uh, export bags you know which are already pre uh, calibrated to 60 kgs per, okay. per shoot mm -hmm. um, and then after that we saw the bags and that coffee is ready for, for export yes. or indeed for use on the local market Why coffee? What makes it so profitable? Coffee is the second you know, most traded commodity mm -hmm. on the international market. Um, that is second you know, to oil. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of demand for it, particularly mm -hmm. our type of coffee, which is Arabica and which is fully washed as well. Yeah. Um, that type of coffee is, uh, is usually yeah, not readily available on the international market. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can also do things, you know, to export coffee to improve, you know, um, on its green bean outlook and also uh, marketing. So you can sell it as a niche product, particularly for Zambia, you know, where we have a small production, um, we can actually offer it as, as a niche product. So in terms of uh, um, how productive or rather how profitable it is, it really depends on what you do yeah. as a farmer. I see. Do you think that Zambian coffee is marketed as well as it could be or should be? Not really. Um, and, and basically, you know, because um, we have gone down production wise uh, as a nation, like I mentioned, we don't have that many farmers uh, because coffee requires long-term finance and uh, this, that type of finance is not readily available. Unfortunately, we haven't had much, you know, support from, you know, from governments, mm -hmm. uh, basically because, uh, you know, of the duration that, you know, the crop takes. Mm -hmm. uh, I think tree crop in general in Zambia is not that well uh, promoted mm -hmm. uh, by the powers that be. Yes. What are the ways that we are encouraging locals to go well, out and buy Zambian coffee? Um, if we are going to succeed you know, in, in marketing our crop, we need to ensure that it is consumed locally. Of course. We also note mm -hmm. that uh, one of the major problems uh, in uh, coffee being consumed mm -hmm. largely in Zambia is, is basically because of the way it is prepared. Mm -hmm. uh, so eight, nine years ago, we started a program of training um, baristas, um, and I'm sure uh, our chair lady in you know, Lublinkov must have mentioned this. Yes, she uh, did. Because I did listen to some of, mm -hmm. some of the things she, she talked about. Mm -hmm. Basically, a career mm -hmm. um, in itself, you know, on how to brew coffee. Mm -hmm. And we've seen a great lot improvement in terms of consumption. Mm -hmm. um, most of the hotels and restaurants are now using proper equipment mm -hmm. to brew the coffee and they are offering their clientele proper coffee and I think it's, it's, it's improving, you know, um, the consumption of coffee in the country.
That's good. Yeah, that's really good. Most of our coffee go to high quality descending markets mm -hmm. like Germany, the USA, mm -hmm. Japan, and uh, the Scandinavian countries of uh, Norway, Finland, Sweden, and uh, Denmark. Wow. Yes. Never would have thought. <laughs> Never would have thought. Mm. Literally, all they do is they take our green bean, mm -hmm. roast it, mm -hmm. grind it, and you drink it. It's as simple as that. And um, I think one point I need to make uh, is that, uh, you know, coffee is an African product. Mm -hmm. um, uh, tea is not an African product. And what I mean by coffee is an African product is that it actually originates. Yes. In Africa, mm -hmm. the two types of coffees that are uh, produced worldwide, mm -hmm. uh, which is Robusta as well as Arabica, they all originate, you know, from uh, from Africa. Robusta from Uganda, Arabica, you know, from Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. So you do need, you know, to begin taking coffee because it is your product. That's what Africa has given the world. So we should never you know uh, uh you know be cheated mm -hmm. you know particularly regarding coffee it is your product as an africa uh, an african and uh, you need to be proud about it uh, i just wanted to find out now do you have any final words that you'd like to share maybe for small scale farmers large scale farmers words of advice or words of criticism maybe <laughs> well so there are a lot of advantages you know if we can promote you know, uh, you know, coffee production in Zambia. Uh, like I said, the market is not our problem. Yeah. Yeah. We are currently producing so little, you know, that we're not able to, you know, to meet the demand. Mm -hmm. um, we opened up markets like, you know, in Japan and the other Far East you know, countries, the US, uh, but uh, we are able to also supply, you know, those markets with. Yeah. Uh, with our products, mm -hmm. yes. So the name is already out there, and the industry is in place. The facilities, you know, are in place where we are able to mill the coffee, you know, to the green form, which is what we export, or indeed that is what we also roast to be able to have you know, a cup of coffee. So the industry is by and large in place. Um, and all we need is to produce the coffee and the market is there. I see. Well, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much for the opportunity. That's amazing. So, buy coffee, buy local. Yeah. That's all I have to say. <laughs>